New York Comic Con in the Newsarama Skybox. Yeah. I'm Grace Randolph. I'm Justin Tyler. And we're here with Fred Benlente. Hello. Hello. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming up. Uh, so let's talk Archer and Armstrong. Sure. Uh, you've been on the book for a while now, entering year two, yep. building. Uh, where are we going with it? Well, uh, Archer Armstrong, our mismatched uh, conspiracy fighting uh, buddy team, has split at the end of the last arc because Armstrong you know, is, a, is not only an immortal drunkard, he's also kind of a man whore, and he yeah. slept with Archer's uh, love interest, and Archer was not pleased. Been there. And that sets up a civil war in the sect, which is the arc that just came out uh, here, uh, issue 14, which just came out on Wednesday, in which we have a wonderful uh, variant for, I should yeah. say, plug that as an exclusive New York Comic Con variant that uh, Clayton Henry lovingly rendered. <laughs> uh, and so the sect civil war start, uh, kicks off uh, in that issue, and basically it's, the, the premise of the storyline is, if all the conspiracy theories are true and all these shadowy organizations are actually behind all the news you know, stories and, and how the world is actually run, when they all start fight, fighting with each other, the whole world starts to fall apart because there's no, you know, no the, dri the drivers are not at the steering wheel yeah. anymore. And so Archer Armstrong, who spent the whole first year of the series trying to defeat the sect, now realize they've got to go back Ugh. and try yeah. to put the sect back together again because otherwise the whole global society will totally collapse. Well, when researching this book, do you get really paranoid? <laughs> uh, I don't, you know, I've been fascinated by conspiracies and like weird history mysteries since I was a little kid, like the Lost Colony of Roanoke and Amelia Earhart and um, the Loch Ness Monster. I, you know, I was all into the, I was glued to the, uh, In Search Of, right? The Leonard Nimoy yeah, show. Yeah, yeah. This is like with no internet, so you were really this into is, it. I know, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really did. Yeah. Well, and, well, and I was nine, so that, that helped too. He didn't but, have like a wife at the time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I, I did not have other things to distract my attention. But uh, uh, yeah, so I've been in, into this stuff since I was a kid and uh, it would be fun to think that that you know that the Trilateral Commission is actually running everything, and uh, and they're all making sure that you know that the trains run on time. But I, I think the the real terrifying uh, truth is that in our world, things just kind of happen. It's just gonna happen. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, we'll see if uh, an Illuminati member doesn't show up here. Exactly. And, uh, split this tape, yeah, the tape glitches. You know. <laughs> so, well, oh, I, if I have a heart attack in the middle of this panel, yeah, this exactly. interview, don't believe we'll be, it. We'll be like, stuff just happens. <laughs> Enjoy your plutonium poisoning. <laughs> Do you have any specific uh, well-known conspiracy theories that you're bringing into the fold yeah. next? Um, yes, uh, the Freemasons play a huge role in, the, in this arc. Uh, they date back, or claim they date back, the Mason, as in, you know, I'm building stuff with stone. Yeah. Uh, dates evilly. back to, Evilly, <laughs> yes, exactly. Or, evil or we just get together every Thursday night and get drunk because yeah. our wives aren't there, you yeah. know. Yeah, exactly. Uh, uh, yeah, the, our Masons are the master builders, and they were designed by the great Michael Walsh, who uh, draws zero for image, mm -hmm. and... Um, I guess they just announced he's doing Secret Avengers uh, really? at Marvel, and he just did a great job on all the new crazy sect uh, faction designs. And so they have these aprons with the with the with the compass and the G, and then yeah. you know they they've got uh, and machine guns. Because <laughs> you why not? You know, exactly. Comic book. Why wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, and so that's awesome. And then there's the Black Block. They're a lot of fun. There, you know, we have these bad guys in the Arch Armstrong, the one percent, who are <laughs> who are, are Wall Street devil worshippers. Uh, and so we got a lot of flack saying... That one's you know, true. Well, yeah, that, that, that is true. We I've reset, that. Say, you know, I used to work on Wall Street, so yes, that's we totally did, true. Yeah, I did, that's yeah. That's funny. And, uh, uh, and so what's funny is that... Um, you know, so we got a lot of flack for like, oh, you know, you're skewing too much to one side of the spectrum. So then we came up with sort of our Occupy Wall Street group, which is the Black Bloc. And they Ooh. are they are crazy anarch Dadaist anarchists who just... Uh, and Michael did a great thing where they, they were literally running boxes on their heads. We were trying to figure out a way to do sort of the anonymous thing. Uh, but not do like a Guy Fox mask. Yeah. But so I sort of came up with the idea, well, they're just anonymous blocks. And so, but then Walsh put emoticons on all of oh, them. That's so funny. they sort of reflect. So it's almost like how Rorschach's masks constantly yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah. The black blocks, emoticons, depending on whatever, you know, so if they're yelling, they've got exclamation points. If they're asking a question, they're, they're oh, questions. That's very it's, funny. it's so fun. It's adorable and insane. Well, speaking of like, you have Secret Wars here in Archer and Armstrong, but then you have like the real war, you know, on G.I. Joe, IDW. Yes. The, re the real war. War against people dressed like snakes. Yes, yeah, yeah. that's very exciting. The most real war. Yeah, <laughs> yeah uh, the arc we're in right now is called Threat Matrix, uh, and it's a super fun arc of total. That now that's paranoia. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The uh, one of the uh, great bad guy, Mad Monk, who's a Cobra character created by David Latham, who's a terrific, terrific writer, mm. uh, is is head of the New York City Cobra. Station house or bureau or whatever you want That'd to call it. That'd be a it. good bureau to be in. It like, is. You can it hang is. Out, you're going yeah. out of town. And bars so, are open late. 
and so he's totally overwhelmed the GI Joe's uh, threat matrix, which is their their uh, NASA sort of NSA prism program that sort of uh, looks for online chatter to predict terrorist attacks, and except he's, Madbuck's flooded it with information, so that all these terrorist attacks are happening all over the city, and G.I. Joe sort of has to fan out and stop it. Meanwhile, Mad, Mo Mad Monk is, is manipulating Duke, who's the leader of the G.I. Joe's. They have a, a history together. Destro hates Mad Monk, and he's trying to backstab <laughs> stab him. Uh, Cover Girl and Roblox suspect Duke is up to something, so they're after him, and so it's just this constant circle of betrayal. You're writing betrayal. a soap, You're writing a soap <laughs> Yeah, exactly, with, with guns. What's yes. it like moving G.I. Joe to urban warfare? It's, uh, well, you know, I, that's, that's, that's something I really wanted to do when I took over the book, is I wanted to take, uh, a lot of times, you know, they're in sort of full faux jungle countries or oh, desert countries. countries. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's actually an edict, because we're not allowed to use real countries. Oh, yeah. really? So, but the one, oh, the one real country we're allowed to use, though, is America. So yeah. I think we're going to blow yeah. up parts of America yeah. now. You know, it's going to be exciting. Uh, yeah, so uh, I just think it's more reflective of what the military has to go through today. Mm -hmm. and, and obviously, a lot of military folks read G.I. Joe. Oh, do they? That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, I did a so signing in San Antonio recently to benefit the CBLDF, and, which is, and San Antonio is just uh, Navy bases and yeah. Air Force bases and, and Army bases, and uh, yeah, the, the veterans and active personnel there just showed up in droves. Oh, that's awesome. wonderful. And uh, so moving on to another uh, war you're uh, writing. We uh, like war. Co yeah, comics, it turns out for some reason. Uh, Conan. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The one man war against yeah. Uh, everyone. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I'm taking over from the great Brian Wood, who's mm -hmm. wrapping up his run with issue 25. He's adapting a really terrific story by Robert E. Howard called Queen of the Black Coast. I yes. love this title. Yeah. Yes, yes, so yes, don't yes, mess yes, it up. yes, yes, yes. Oh, oh, you're a big, oh, great. Oh, oh, that's awesome. It's a great yeah, title. Yeah, no, it's the no, only I Conan can't wait. Title I read, I'm I like excited. The relationship between him and Belief. Oh, excellent. Well, uh, not to give any spoilers away for the end of a st the end of a story that was published in 1934. But uh, <laughs> if you're familiar with like, the Red Wedding from Game of Thrones, something very comparable happens at the end of that arc. So I'm yeah. picking up right after that. Ooh. And so Conan is a broken, shattered man and has to kind of fight his way back to... This looks bad for Belief. <laughs> well, again... The name of the book no is spoilers. Not No spoilers. <laughs> Uh, but uh, and he gets involved uh, with uh, uh, Kush, which is the, the one of the, the Hyborian kingdoms. Uh, this is based on a fragment that Robert E. Howard started but never finished. He has like a pat. He wrote like a page and a half outline, and then um, like four or five chapters. And uh, I'm. It was untitled. Uh, I'm calling it the Witch Hunter of Kush, because uh, Conan gets involved with a literal witch hunt. There's a <laughs> there's someone's casting spells and summoning horrible monsters and murdering people. Uh, through hexes in the town of Shambhala, and Conan gets involved in that, and uh, that fear of, of terror. And, well, there uh, are so many different Conan books. Why, what separates this one? Why do you think I picked this one up and I don't read any other Conan? Right, right. Well, <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Sorry, uh, well, Mike Richardson. No, Mike Richardson is the head of Dark Horse. is very specific about this. The, the, the Dark Horse Conan, the Barbarian book, tells the story of Conan's life. Mm -hmm. um, previous Conan books have just kind of been kind of random, but the way Robert E. Howard laid out a chronology, or at least how Howard scholars have interpreted the chronology, is he started off at this story and, he, and eventually he obviously becomes King Conan, you know, yeah. that's another title. And so uh, at first I sort of heard this and I was like, do you have a lot of material? And, and I looked at the chronology <laughs> and I was like, oh wow, we're gonna, Brian basically, <laughs> yeah. is, it's halfway point, you know, and so right. I'm picking up and, and I'm starting my run at the halfway point. So uh, awesome, I hope you stick on the book and hope mm -hmm. you enjoy I'm it. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. <laughs> I feel like all your books have are infused with fun. There's a very fun uh, lightness to it. And that's yeah. something that I think is yeah. great for people out there that want to read like, comics that are like have an energy to them and and what's fun about Conan is Conan is kind of a serious dude yeah. and yeah. so it's I was fun just to fun Conan. yeah yeah so I I, I I mean I guess it'll be fun Conan because because that's sort of yeah that's sort of what I end up doing or at least that's how, how it, you know it's perceived uh, but yeah no I mean the Conan stuff starts at a really low emotional ebb oh, and so it's that's it, new for you. yeah okay. yeah yeah and uh, and new for Conan right he's yeah. used to being the the alpha male in every situation and 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 you know he's got to somehow get back to that point. Awesome! Uh, so much good work that you're working on. Yeah, we're thank excited you. to read all that. So thank you, thank you for stopping by. No problem. You can watch uh, more videos from your Comic Con right now.